Hello and welcome to Tykes TV. Neil, I see I've got Dave on and James. It's been a while, but James, great to have you on, mate. Cheers, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, another away trip. Uh, we'll come to you, James, first. You haven't been on for a bit. So another away journey. Um, a point, but could it have been more? You know, possibly could have come away with a win. We'll get on about officiating a bit later on. But what were your overall second game, mate? I thought we started the game really well. We had um, chances and we should have really been 2 0 up at half time. Um, the thing that was lacking for me is we we're quite wasteful in front of the box. Um, but yeah, I think that's the one thing that let us down. We wasn't quite clinical enough when we needed to be. Yeah, I mean, I... call for me frustrating. I thought it were, it were a game where he could have really put his laces through ball, Dave, uh, early doors and made an intent in the statement. I know we hit crossbar kind of thing, but. For me, Cole, again, does a lot of running, but end product, um, what we ought to come overall game, you know, up front as well. Uh, I think it was the same old up front as uh, we've seen before. Uh, I thought Cole looked weak. He was getting pushed all over the place. He's, um, he's, he's He plays too deep. You need someone else in that position, I think, that's going to, you know, hold on to the ball. I mean... If it were a Kiefer Moore type of player in that position, you know, you know that he's gonna he's got the physicality mm-hmm. to to hold the ball up and, and lay it off to someone. Cole's not got that. Um yeah, we were always for the front of the goal again. And ironically, the the best finished Cole lad was um was chalked off by the referee. Yeah. Very frustrating that was. But um yeah, it was like you said, it was it was a point, but it you know, it could have been more. I mean, just going off that, James, do you think that we... Still trying to find his his ideal pairing up front. I know uh Aitchin has gone to Motherwell and a couple of strikers have come in, Max Watters and uh Ollie Shaw. Noah has been out uh, injured, picked up a bit of an eagle. Do you think it's I mean we're in second half of the season now, we're still undecided who was his best pairing is up front. Would you say that's a fair comment? Yeah, definitely. I agree on that completely. Um it's working out who our best two two up front is and there's not really been anyone that that could sort of take the game by the scruff of the neck, or someone with that bit of physic physicality, or someone that's going to sort of take a, cause a few teams' problems. We've not really got that player yet. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, in first half, I thought we should have been in front. I thought the second half were woeful, and I think even Duff's gone on to on record so that in second half. To be fair, we weren't in races, and he had to get shook up a few things. <sighs> Before we get to you know Thomas's second goal for club, Dave, referee, I mean, woeful at best. I mean, I've got to watch my language on here, but woeful at best. I mean, that was shocking, absolutely shocking. That decision, mate. It was. Um, you couldn't see it clearly from where we were because it was the opposite end of the ground. But um, you know, watching it back on on TV afterwards, it's it's you know it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to hear his explanation from that. I really would. Mm. It's 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 just it, but it's what we get. It's you know we always say we get these bad refs and they can't get any worse and they do. And the the, the bad thing here was I thought in the first half he had quite a decent game. Mm. I thought them um, you know he was letting the game flow. He wasn't blowing up for every, every challenge like some refs do. You know we were talking about it. You know saying he's you know he's not done bad compared to some of the ones we've had. Uh, but then we were we were both saying oh we probably jinxed him now by by saying this and. You know, second half it was it was a, it was a completely different ref for, for me. Um, I thought the ref in the Oxford game, I thought in the first half he was okay, and the second half he just seemed to completely change, and it was exactly the same yesterday. But uh, it was a poor second half yesterday um, until the changes were made, and um, I think that that galvanised us and um, pushed us on. And you know, if that goal had been allowed, you know, we could have gone on and got all three points. Yeah, I mean, it, it was frustrating for me because. I kind of agree with you. In first half, ref didn't seem to be having too bad of a game, and I don't think a yellow card came until well into the second half. He, he tried letting play go best that he could. And what was pleasing for me to see is that back, I mean, I called it out, but I thought Anderson was going to be influential, James, uh, you know, because r- rumours that Collins might be out, but he did start. But it turned out that Thomas, he, you know, he got, for me, my man of match will come on to man of match a bit later, but. Another performance from Thomas, which I, I, I think a player who don't like don't look like a fish out of water kind of thing. Looks like he's been pretty accomplished and been playing in, in our defence for quite some time, but he hasn't. So 
What what shot can Thomas? How, how did you all see him in game? I thought he was superb throughout. Like very good in the air, physically strong, um, really good at set pieces as well. Um, I think I think we made a really good signing there. I know he's on loan, but he's mm. terrific. He works really well with Anderson as well. So um, I think we've looked a lot stronger as well since he's come into the team. So um, and he's got that bit of passion about him. His drive is not afraid to get stuck in. So yeah, we've got a really good player there. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, it were bad when Edwards went out. I mean, he sent to come in and settle it in back three, Dave, and obviously Thomas has come in and nobody really knew what about him. We thought, oh, another lone player, but it's been undecided. But according to what reports were saying, we're after him back in summer and he went to Bristol Rovers, but there he called him and loaned him back to us and it's kind of fitted in. Um, back three for me, I don't know what your take on it is, but back three for me looked pretty accomplished pretty solid I thought we started sitting a bit too deep and started time wasting a bit but I thought it's going to come and bite us again but what were more disappointing for me is that I wish the front two pairing it had been on the same probably level and weight rate as that what defence were at bat mate yeah the defence were they look um, a lot more solid than what they have done and uh, no disrespect to Edwards because he did a good job for us when he was here but out of the two players, I feel a lot more confident with Thomas mm. at the back because, like James has said, he just he he just he looks like that sort of player. He he's the one that you need. He's and like you said, he's 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 fitted in like he's he's been, been here all season. He um I said I said before in the other video, he looks like that the long we had from from Burnley, very similar player, yeah. and he looks like he's been around a long, long time. Probably a lot longer than he has, mm. and he just looks to take charge. He's one of these people that I've been calling out for now for a while. That you know, when things are happening on the pitch, you need to you know get your troops together and you know get them going. Um, no disrespect to Anderson, but um, I think Thomas is more of a, a natural leader, and he, he's showing that in the in the defence. And um, it has really you know patched up what was looking quite dodgy at times over the last couple of couple of games before he arrived, and. Um, you know, I feel so much more confident now with him with him in the back three, and uh, he's he's uh, got a good partnership with Anderson and um, Kitchen, and um, yeah, apart from um, that finish yesterday for, for for them, which was a you know cracking goal that was, did that really well. Um, I thought we looked pretty comfortable at the back. Um, the front two, I think, I the front two play too deep for me. Mm. Uh, and there's nothing you know they need to push further forward, and then we need someone in the in the gap there between. You know the the midfield line um, to help them because you know they're not. W Watters ran around a lot. You know you put the effort in, but um, he was you know he was halfway between you know the the goal and the, and the halfway line most of the time. As as was Cole, and the, your strikers need to push forward even when you're on the attack. You know they they were still playing so deep. They need to go further forward, and we need other people from midfield pushing in. You know to get the ball out to to, to players and you know play that killer pass. I mean, when was the last time we saw a killer pass go through the middle? I mean, mm. I've been racking my brains to think of that, and there's no one in there that's been doing that. But um, you know, as 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 harsh as what people have been on the strikers, you know, I think it's more more the tactics up front than the the actual personnel. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I know I mentioned with subs. Josh Martin came on, and Oli Shaw, so Barry Cotter as well. So we're pleased to see some of the new players what we've been involved in. It's finally getting some game time. And I get where you're coming from with that. It's like the creating chances. Um, for me, are we going to get a strike if we're going to get into double figures this season? I don't know. I don't know. Probably you'd, you'd look at Cole, he's on seven or eight goals. But apart from that, we need to be... It's a good job goals are being chipped in from other areas, you know, from set piece and stuff like that. Uh, and midfield chipping in when we can. Thomas at back, we've highlighted before. But for me, I'd like to see... At least one striker getting double figures and trying, you know, grasp that point. Because, like what James said earlier, is that nobody's really grabbed it with scruff and neck and said, "Yeah, I'm, I'm demanding this spot. I'm going to be, you know, leading goal scorer." We aren't. We don't seem to be getting that at the minute. Um, and you both highlighted it that they both, you know, ruined about put effort in like H before he went to Motherwell. But there's nobody up there when we do create a chance, it goes begging, and you're wanting some kind of bit of a goal poach or someone who's going to mix it. You know, probably a James Norwood kind of player, probably about five seasons ago, it had probably fitted into that model. 
where he'd been up in thereabouts in, in box area. What were your take on substitutions when James, when you know Martin came on and home and Ollie Shaw came on? But what were your take on Barry Cotter? You know, um, twenty thousand pounds signing, probably you know people if you raise eyebrows or not much of a player, but what a long throw of that ball. <laughs> That was incredible, like really good. I wasn't expecting it because I, I didn't know much about him, but it was just unbelievable. And I mean, that could be a danger, especially like it's going to cause a lot of teams mm -hmm. a few problems, like having to deal with that is not an easy fit situation to be in. Like, I mean, you look at Oxford the other night; their throwings were causing us a lot of trouble. So it's nice, it's nice to have that weapon as well in your locker. Like, it's something different. Yeah, I mean, Tom Edwards had that bit of a long throw, Dave. But I don't think he more like a more or less except missile. What well, well, zooming straight in from Cotter. I mean, I think he took everybody by surprise. I think even Duff said he didn't rate no until you know threw a, threw a, a ball in. It was like good, yeah, it was like a corner, like best, better than a free kick because it was like proper aimed and went straight in, didn't it? Well, you got these players that have got the long throws, and you've got players that have got long throws, and this was a this was a long throw, mm -hmm. and um, you know, didn't see if it was flicked on by anyone yesterday. Um, in real time, but watching it back, you can just appreciate how you know how much power is in that throw, and yeah. it is. It's like you say, it's like it's like having a corner, you know. In you know, we need to if we can build on our set piece play now and use that as a potential, say it was a free kick kind of thing, you know. Then um, you know, you get you get your players, your strikers into the into the six yard box, then the goals are going to come, and. Um, it's 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 worked for so many teams like uh, James at Oxford did it, you know Cardiff used to do it with Sean Morrison, um, Stoke with Delap, you know there was so many teams that have used this weapon to their advantage and they were renowned for it, mm. and um, yeah didn't know a lot about him until yesterday, didn't see too much from him yesterday because he you know he came on as a sub, but um, he, you know invaluable that was and you know he's um, he's got the points in the end with that throw. Not, not bad to have it in locker, is it? Like to come off the bench and make an impact like that. So, yeah, I mean, a point arguably it could have been, you know, three points uh, if ref had uh, allowed player to carry on a bit. Whistle happy should have, for me, should have allowed it to carry on. Uh, poor officiating, but then again, there's no new over here. It wasn't a penalty this time, but it was, uh, you know, blatant. You know, it could have like like play go on and then if it wouldn't have come to open you've, you've still got that way they can bring it back and give free kick uh, so for me yeah I, I, you could have come away with it whether his second half performance warranted that is up doubtful but in first half I look at it we should have we did enough here in the first half to be probably one maybe two and out up in first half hitting post and that I mean James who were your standout man man at match uh, yesterday Bobby Thomas I thought I thought he's brilliant throughout mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Dave? Same. I don't think there'll be any arguments from anybody there. He's, he's had a great game at the back and he's got as the, the equaliser in the last minute. So no doubt for me that it's got to be Thomas. All round performance. Yeah, same again. I mean, you, you're reading all plaudits and that uh, this morning about what's been going off about him. Uh, like I said, is not only when he's on ball, but off at ball as well, like what you both loaded to the he's like communicating more a leader than Anderson, no disrespect to Anderson. But it looks like he, he wants it, he's hungry for it. And again, to cap it off with a goal. And when, when he went set off running that touchline, I thought he's going to run into the locker rooms at this rate. I thought he was still getting to play. But it was great to see. It was great to see that he was, you know, his arts in it. So for me, yeah, Thomas again, uh, man at match. Take it into home game now. Cambridge coming up Saturday. Um, we'll probably do a, well, we will do another preview for that, like, but. People what's watching, please have your sent comments below. Portsmouth, you know, against Barnsley, what should we have come away with three points? What we actually done to I can imagine a fair amount of comments coming in on that one. And your man at match as well. So James and Dave, it's been a pleasure to have you on. Uh, appreciated it. Thank you. Um let us know your thoughts. Please like, subscribe, and share. One thing left to say, you reds. <laughs>